The only way to really live in this is to embrace the fact that nothing matters. Well, then what's the point of living? This is such a turning point for her because she realizes that, like, she has to repeat one of the worst days of her life. Also, she's, like, genuinely has developed an incredible connection with Niles, and I think she's terrified. <laughs> Not as terrified as I am to start the show! Oh, it's happening! I just told you I was terrified of this! Ah! Welcome to Cord Killers, where we help you face your fears about watching the stuff you love, when you want, where you want, however you want. I'm Tom Merritt. Yeah, I'm Brian Brushwood, but most importantly, I just faced my fear of not knowing what that was. Bryce Castillo, can huh. you clarify for me? So Hulu put out a commentary cut for their well-received comedy, Palm Springs. Uh, it's already streaming now on Hulu. Just go uh, search up Palm Springs, and in the extras tab, you'll see the hour and a half commentary cut. So it's like got picture-in-picture in specific parts where Andy Samberg and Christina Milioti and and I think some of the the producers or directors also give their commentary on parts of the movie. Uh, Palm Springs is good. I think it was a pick of ours during the Killies a few weeks ago. Sure. It's a it's a great film. Go check it out. Uh, not as great as our guest, Nicole Lee, joining us. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Thank you. Hello. Uh, you know, Fabulous I mean, we've segue. done great segue. We we've done a couple of shows. Uh, this year, but the new year hadn't really started until we got Nicole Lee back. Welcome back. It's good to have you. Happy to be here. <laughs> um, we are proud. You might say proud as a peacock to have Nicole. And that takes us to our primary target. Rough. Which is about HBO Max. Yeah, it was rough. Uh, NBCU is shifting sports into peacock from both within and without uh, also partnering up with Twitter, they expanded their, uh, broader sales support globally. They're going to do more live streams with on Twitter, but let's talk about those sports. Uh, they are going to wind down NBCSN, the NBA, NBC sports network it used to be versus used to be outdoor life. Uh, it's going away, uh, getting rid of it. They will take some of the bigger sports coverage, like, like the Stanley cup finals, move it to either USA network or some of the smaller sports coverage. It's going to go to Peacock. Uh, NBC has been consolidating its networks, winding down Chiller, Clue, Esquire previously. If you're like, oh, I didn't realize they had those networks. Well, that would be why they probably wound them down. But NBCSN is probably one of the most successful ones that they are shutting down. Had better carriage and ratings than a lot of the other sports networks, even like FS1, but maybe not quite as high of profile. FS1 was doing Major League Baseball playoffs. NBCSN was doing hockey playoffs. And as much as I love both sports, baseball is a little more popular than hockey down here in the U.S. NBC can now cut costs and still carry hockey, tennis, NASCAR, and wrestling. Uh, they'll just put it on USA or Peacock. Speaking of wrestling, though, they're going to be putting a lot more wrestling on Peacock. WWE and NBCU reached a multi-year agreement to make Peacock the exclusive place to stream the WWE Network in the U.S. starting March 18th. If you are an existing WWE Network subscriber, you will become a Peacock Premium with Ads subscriber on that day. And the amount you pay per month will fall from $9.99 to $4.99. Uh, Peacock is going to get 17,000 hours of WWE programming along with a 24 hour WWE channel. Uh, and Peacock will be the place for all your WWE live events at no additional charge, starting with Fastlane on March 21st. WWE Network, if you remember, launched back in February 2014 reported 1.6 million average paid subscribers. If you're outside the U.S., you'll still get it the way you've been getting it up till now, but in the U.S., folding it into Peacock. Brian, before you tell me what you think of this, I do need to disclose that my wife works for Rotten Tomatoes, which has a channel on Peacock, and Rotten Tomatoes is owned by NBCU, which means that I get my health insurance from NBC. So don't believe anything I say. Sure. Unfortunately, what I want to follow up with is don't believe anything not only that I'm saying now, but I have said for years and years, like I've had some very firm, very simple beliefs when it comes to setting up a proper brand. It's a miracle that the WWE network ever made any money at all. Uh, and I, 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 I have been fairly loud and fairly direct about uh, my, my proclamations of doom and gloom for HBO Max as a brand, and yet here I sit, 
continuing to watch stuff on HBO Max. It, 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 I guess, I guess, I don't know. Everything is a word salad and just like throw everything into a, a, a weird mix and it works out like uh, WWE. Congrats. I guess you guys love NBC now. I don't, I, 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 I've got nothing for you, Tom. And norm, normally I try to come to the table with at least some kind of sensible architecture for all of this. I, I, Nicole, can you help me out here? I don't know what to make of any of this. Well, I think it's just, I mean, NBC is getting, it's, just, it's shedding dead weight, it seems like, isn't it? And I, I, that's why it seems like, and it's kind of moving all of its uh, sort of, properties to and you know as we all as we've often said you know, streaming is the future right and peacock is gonna be its one-stop shop for all of these different properties and it and honestly it doesn't surprise me too much it's consolidating all of these things under one umbrella or at least you know fewer umbrellas i guess depending it's not, not technically one umbrella but fewer umbrellas and you know to push subscription to peacock it doesn't I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I think I think we're in the middle of a, a reshuffling period. And I, I think we expected this because we were seeing too much, um, uh, uh, I don't know if it's the right word, balkanization of, of, of too many, you know, $3.99 per month services. And there's, there's some amount of amalgamation uh, as everything comes together. Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, HBO Max broke me, Tom. It broke me because oh, no. it broke all the rules of everything I believe and turns out to be a pretty good service. And and no, I don't believe that Chex Mix is going to be rebranded as Chex. Uh, I, 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 but, but, but uh, like, is Peacock going to be the place that you think of wrestling? I get, get, like, help, help me out in terms of, of, of the branding strategy of all this. Well, here's here's what I think's going on. Uh, the the less controversial, and I I think the less threatening to your worldview, uh, is NBCSN going down is a big moment. It's a big milestone. We've known that smaller cable networks are not going to last in this world where people will pay for Netflix, will pay directly to Disney Plus, will pay for Peacock. Uh, you aren't going to continue to have that early 2000s boom of let's just keep adding subgenres to cable. It's a money pot that will never end. That and We've started to see that a little bit, but NBCSN going away is the first big one to fall. It will not be the last big one to fall. You're going to see more moves like this. NBC is just the first to do it. The WWE going to Peacock is way more interesting to me because that is taking a niche network, WWE, and saying, gosh, you guys, you know, you got 1.6 million average page subscribers. That's great. What if you were just on a service that had tens of millions of subscribers? Wouldn't that be better? Uh, and then we get to put another thing on Peacock to say, Hey, I know you're all tired uh, of subscribing to everything. Well, if you come to Peacock, you're going to get Olympic sports. You're going to get some hockey because uh, it sounds like they're going to move some stuff over to Peacock. You're going to get all the wrestling. We're your place for sports. Uh, everybody's complaining about live sports. Guess what? Peacock's got it. Come on in. By the way, while you're here, you can have Peacock Originals, you can have NBC Originals, you can have Back Catalog of the Office and more. Uh, it's, it's it's making the bet that these services like Peacock Disney Plus can be hubs. Rather than having a world of infinite numbers of subgenres, maybe we will have hubs that you will decide, okay, I'm going to pick these four hubs out of maybe, you know, seven to ten of the hubs and and peacock would be one of those yeah i think that's the part that breaks my mind the most is because wwe appeared to be doing really well as a niche uh, 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 they carved out a really precise comfortable place where they were making a lot of money and uh, you, we of course are not privy to what discussions happened behind the scenes that got them to say yeah yeah sure join peacock whatever um i i, I suspect that peacock got the better end of the deal. And I, I, I think that we're sort of collapsing back into a version of, of the monoculture where, you know, there's really only four or five different mega channels that uh, most people can handle in uh, American culture. I, I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm kind I mean, of, there were for, always I, only I, four or five mega channels. They just broke them up into other channels, right? Yeah. 
I mean, we only had like Viacom, CBS, ABC, or Disney uh, owning things on television. It's just that they made it look like there were a lot of other channels. I know this very, and Nicole Lee, you know this too, uh, because we worked at an independent channel trying to make its way in the early 2000s, and it couldn't. It had to get nope. bought by somebody else to make its way. <laughs> right. No, totally. Uh, that was tech, tech, tech TV, by the way. I don't know if anyone else <laughs> 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 FYI. The mystery is killed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that's totally true. Well, like, my, and maybe maybe you can make me feel better about this, Nicole, because what I want to believe as an independent broadcaster, I want to believe that you can carve out your niche and make a lot of money and do it all on your own. But when I see somebody who's clearly succeeding at this in the WWE, and I see them folding themselves into Peacock mm -hmm. for the benefit of Peacock, because it looks like Peacock's getting the better end of the deal. I, I, again, I have no idea how much of a check they're getting behind the scenes or whatever. It makes me sad as an independent creator, and maybe I shouldn't be sad. I don't know. I think it's I think they're apples and oranges. I mean, there's independent creators, and then there's the WWE is not. I mean, they're a big, you know, <laughs> they're a big uh, entity, and uh, I don't think they're the same thing as an independent creator per se. I I wouldn't want to equate the two in any way i mean i think you know i think it makes sense this gives gives more of an audience to wwe and this way the the you know the let's say there's one person in the family that really likes wrestling but he can't really justify the ten dollars a month to the rest of the family but say hey if it's part of peacock it's okay because you get all this other stuff with it and you know that way it's much more palatable it's like it's the whole you can justify it a little easier. It's easier on the pocketbook. I don't know. I think it totally makes sense in this scenario. I don't. I wouldn't want to like you know paint a broader brush of what this means for you know another kind of channel somewhere else because it may not be the same thing. Yeah, according to to Variety sources, uh, the five year deal is worth more than a billion dollars uh, over that time period. So uh, WWE getting a nice big fat paycheck from Peacock, not having to manage all the customer acquisition and uh, all, all of the uh, all of the the customer relation, like login and tech support. All they have to do is provide the feed. I mean, they still have to manage all that stuff for their international audience, but in the US, they, they're going to reduce costs. I can see where that would be beneficial to the WWE as well. Yeah. And uh, as I'm fond of telling other YouTubers, like the closest thing to real magic I ever get to see is a power of a cross collaboration, both parties end up with more energy, more subscribers, more enthusiasm. All of the videos do very, very well. Look, uh, good for WWE, good for Peacock and all that stuff. I just, uh, I, I, I suppose I was just wistfully getting a little misty eyed at the idea that maybe everybody could pilot their own starship. But the truth is, yeah, I, I don't think you have to give up that dream. I think WWE was big enough that you could call it a quasi major. It wasn't a small indie. Right. Uh, and I think there's still a lot of room out there for the small indies to say, hey, y'all, uh, no, no Peacock or Disney Plus or anybody else will touch this topic, but we do it really well and you love it. And so you can come to us like I, I, I still think that's viable. Well, if you want to keep an independent creative enterprise up off the ground flying through the air you can be an investor it's a brand new organization called patreon.com slash cord killers now i know you've never heard of cord killers it's all about cutting the cord watching what you want when you want on whatever device you please it's hosted by me and tom merritt and we sometimes have incredible guests like nicole lee and always Bryce Castillo. Uh, but the important thing is that you can support <laughs> us by giving us just a buck an episode by heading on over to patreon.com slash cord killers. You'll get your own RSS feed. You'll get bonus content. And uh, it's good. Give us I money. mean, I would like them to give us a thousand dollars each. I know they can't, but man, wouldn't that be amazing? So think about that and then think about giving us a dollar. Oh, pretty well, cheap. That's nothing. Oh, well, yeah. for a second, I thought you were going to ask for a thousand dollars. I can give you a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, uh, wait, anybody I'm asking for the dollar? But uh, give give me the dollar. <laughs> give, give us both the dollar. That's two dollars. patreoncom slash killers. Let's talk about how to watch. 
Uh, Netflix had its latest earnings report last week, adding 8.51 million paid subscribers. That beat the estimates of 6 million, uh, reaching 203.7 million subscribers worldwide now. Netflix gained 36.6 million streaming customers on the year, because we finished up 2020. Also reported $6.64 billion in earnings, $1.19 per share, if you're into that sort of thing. Missed a little bit on the analyst expectations there, but not by much. That doesn't matter, though. Here's the big news financially for Netflix. It believes it will reach break even in 2021 and has no plans to raise further debt. So all those folks who've been out there saying like, sure, but they just keep losing money and they keep. Yes, that was the plan until they made money. And this is the point this year. They're like, we will start making our own money now. Uh, and, and the idea is that stick just keeps going up and the investors reap all the benefits. Also, as part of its earnings call Tuesday, Netflix announced it will make its shuffle button test a feature for all users worldwide. This is one we've been talking about for a while where some people, you know, very small percentage were getting it. Apparently it works. So everybody's going to get the shuffle button. Uh, the way it's been testing is it appears underneath your profile icon and says play something or maybe shuffle play. Uh, it always has a crossed arrow shuffle icon. And when you press it, it uses its content personalization algorithm to just pick something for you to watch. Could be something you're partway through. So it knows like, oh, you were you were in the middle of watching that and you got interrupted. Could be something on your watch list. Uh, could be something it thinks you will like based on what you've watched before. Netflix says the response from the less than 1% of users it gave the feature to was positive, uh, but they haven't settled on a name yet. Uh, and they didn't say when it's going to arrive, just said in the first half of the year. So by June 1st, I guess. Netflix was asked if its deal with Cinemark Theaters for a shortened window meant a new revenue stream. Chief Content Officer Ted Sarando said potentially. In fact, CEO Reed Hastings took that further, saying that he hoped HBO Max's simultaneous release experiment will show later this year that post-COVID, it will still benefit theaters and streamers. So Hastings saying like, hey, once people are going back to the theaters later this year, maybe the vaccine picks up, we'll see that having simultaneous release doesn't hurt theater attendance. And on the tech side of things, Netflix has adopted the XHE AAC codec for its Android devices, which reduces buffering and makes audio more intelligible in noisy environments. If you've got Android 9 or later, you can take advantage of that. And Netflix says it's hoping to bring it to more platforms. iOS does support that codec, so you could expect it to come there as well. Um, I would love it if somebody could write us like with a hands-on difference of, of, of pre and post codec change, because uh, subjectively, I know that makes a tremendous difference when, when you even everything out, when you equalize stuff, when you take a, you know, a quiet scene and make it louder, loud scene, make it quieter, all that stuff. Uh, however, that, uh, that shuffle button is all I want to talk about. I, I, it should be called the plausible deniability matrix. Uh, you, you press it and whatever it shows it, it's not your fault. You didn't pick that. You're not the kind of what? what? Oh, sweetie, this romantic comedy. Why are you watching how. that? Oh. I didn't. Watch, I mean, I just you know, you know, I just pressed the. I pressed the, the shuffle button. And yeah, it just kind of came up. Sorry. Netflix. All right, Nicole, do you like the Netflix shuffle button? <clears throat> I I have I have mixed feelings on it. So the same way that I would have mixed feelings with a shuffle button on a music playlist. You know, like. Sometimes I just want to watch certain things, very specific things. And sometimes the reason why I stop watching that show is because I don't like that show. So don't play that show anymore. Um, so I don't know. I'm a little bit, uh, eh, we'll see. We'll I want to see it go like, like, like super crazy. I want to press that button and I want it to judge and say, you know what? You don't think you're going to like this. And if you even know what it is, you're going to hate it. So I'm going to show you the end of it first. Boom. We're at the last five <laughs> minutes. What are you watching? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Keep watching. Oh, do you want to know what's, what this is? Here's what it is. But I'm going to lie to you about the name of it. It's called The Cop Who Made a Good Decision. Oh, wait. What's that? You're now two hours into it? Sorry. It was RoboCop. 1986's incredible vehicle about the corporatization of America. You're welcome. It's me, the robot. I wouldn't mind a shuffle play on like the trailers just because it gives me like a brief little snapshot of what each show is going to be like. And then if I do like something, I'm like, yes, that does look good. And I'm just going to kick okay or something or that's an idea. Yeah. 
I, I don't mean to be too pedantic when I when I say this, uh, but I don't really love the name Shuffle for this because sh Shuffle usually, like in music, it's like I've got a playlist, but instead of playing it in order, you know, mix up the order. You're not asking for it to like mix up the order, you know, like sh show me Lupin out of order. I or, or actually, that's actually what Brian was describing was like shuffle the order of showing me Robocop. Uh, but I think this idea of play something like I just, uh, and I don't really run into it myself, but I know a lot of people are like, I look at the Netflix thing and it overwhelms me and I can't make a choice. Giving people that option of just play something next best thing to having a Netflix channel. That's just on. I think I'd prefer that. Cause then, then we get that experience that Brian's talking about where you like see the last five minutes of something and you're like, Oh, that was interesting. Can I go back and watch that from the beginning? And of course, Netflix could make that possible. And I would like that. I would like a Netflix yes. channel that I can just join in progress sometimes. But I, I think even though you still have to make a decision to hit the play something button, I think it'll be interesting to see what it comes up with. Well, we're getting closer to that in that the moment that you pull up Netflix, it just starts playing. Like they finally figured out that we don't want to watch the trailer for the thing. We just want to be placed into a random scene. You know, that's mm -hmm. a, that was, it was so delightful yes. to load up Netflix and suddenly I'm halfway through an Auntie Donna sketch. And I'm like, well, I can't stop watching this. And before I know it, I'm rewatching a bunch of Auntie Donna stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 here's something that the crazy anarcho-libertarian probably should never say out loud. I would be so in for a button that said, hey, we're gonna show you some stuff. It's gonna be some weird stuff. Don't worry about it. All you have to do is look at it and we're gonna watch your eyes. We're gonna see when you dilate and when you don't. We're gonna be measuring your pulse. We're just gonna pay full attention and then we're gonna declare, here's the movie you need to watch. And if I trusted it for my privacy, oh my God, I wonder what it would show me. A bunch of you can do it on device. weird stuff. It, it, it's, uh, do it on device. If oh. you do that sort of thing on device instead of in the cloud, then it can like legitimately protect your privacy. Yep, yep, yep. I'm in. Apparently I, alone I mean, on this one. That's fine. <laughs> I know. I, I think it's cool. I, I mean, it's not coming anytime soon. I think that's why Nicole and I are both like, yeah, someday. Uh, that, that'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> the trust because I, I do like that idea of yeah. like we can figure out you know really exactly uh what you'd like to watch because sometimes you do want sometimes i don't want that sometimes i'm like no i i i you may not think i want to watch this but i know i want to watch it but every once in a while you just want to have something appear uh i've i've found myself recently watching the nhl network because they'll just show me hockey and I don't have to decide if my, if my team's not playing, if my team's playing, I want to, I want to watch the blues, but if my team's not playing, but I'm like, I just want to watch some hockey. I don't want to sit there and look at all 10 games that are out there and decide, just, just show me, show me the hockey. And, so, and NHL network does that. We've been talking about various tech news for over a decade. And I can't remember too many times that the story has been, we intend to not go into any more debt we're pretty sure we have it from here on forward. We just want to make a bunch of money. Like that's a fairly unusual story for Netflix to put in, out in there, right? The, in this in this space, we haven't, right? Like I've talked about that with Twitter. I've talked about that with Facebook. Uh, you know, th those were both companies that, uh, you know, for a long time, like, how are you ever going to make any money at Facebook? They'll never make the money. Oh, they made all the money. Oh, they're making way too much money. Uh, we haven't, this is Netflix is the first of this new breed of video entertainment, of TV entertainment to, to potentially anyway, they they haven't actually done it yet, but they're saying, yeah, we're going to pass that milestone. Yeah. And, and, and it makes sense. Like, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, taco trucks, right? Uh, let's, let's go Austin themed. Uh, uh, you got an empty parking lot and you're the first taco truck. And then somebody says, Ooh, uh, I'm the second taco truck, but I could be the taco truck with these flashing led lights. And everybody makes a race into going into debt to have the best taco truck or whatever. Some of them actually make their tacos better. Some of them say the tacos don't matter. What you need is a disco and a DJ. But the point is some of them invite the WWE to come in and make the tacos. Okay, look, this is a better metaphor than I thought. I'm, I'm really vibing on where we're headed here. The point is uh, the fact that Netflix has reached a moment where they're like, yeah, I think we're done spending money. We're just going to collect all the money going forward. 
Well, like, it's it's not a, a decision. It's like, oh, we're making enough money. We don't need to borrow anymore. We can we can pay for seventy movies with what we're making. <laughs> well, like, and, we, and we, specifically, what they're also saying is they're saying that um, uh, there's not enough market share to be gained by getting any flashier or any any no no more zazz is going to give us a bigger percentage of the market starting now. well i i don't i mean that may be true but that's not e even exactly what they're saying they're saying like we finally reached the moment where our investments are paying off yes which i 100 percent believe and is yeah. an amazing moment God, I, I, for those of you who have been with us from the beginning 12 years ago, this is a <laughs> remarkable moment for Tom yeah. and I. <laughs> Give us well, this moment. Well, and, and, and Nicole, I, I, I know you, you've you followed, you know, a lot of these tech companies that that went from that, like, oh, all they do is, is raise debt to, you know, oh my gosh, they're the most valuable, you know, they've got market capitalization that's bigger than Exxon. Uh, it, it, I mean, how do you feel about seeing this sector pass through that and Netflix leading the, the way? I mean, Netflix is the market leader, right? They're the giant. They're like the in the in the in the battles of the Davids and the Goliaths. They're the Goliaths now. Like I think they're well in that space of being one of the giants in this field. They were the leader. Then they were, they were the scrappy up upstart with the weird DVD rental situation. But now they're like clearly the leader, clearly the one to beat, and they have to, you know, whether or not they're making money, they have to start making money. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's it's not even just like they're making money. No, no, they have to. They 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 have to because it's time. It's more. It's beyond time. This part of to start making money, and it's good that they are. Which is good. And once you start making money, you start piling up cash reserves. And once you start piling up cash reserves, as we've seen from Apple, you start doing weird stuff. Like I don't know, <laughs> a computer company that makes a phone uh, or starts their own television network. Uh, we're, you know, I, I'm very curious to see where Netflix goes because one thing I've noticed about them is they don't do anything else. Everybody else is like, Oh, we're going to buy Oculus or we're, we're also going to uh, have drones that fly through the air and try to deliver. Netflix just does Netflix. That's it. So now that they're going to pass that moment where they're like, okay, now we're going to have some capital. We can start fund our own projects. Will they? And if they do, what are those going to be? Can we can we take just a few seconds to speculate on all of the easy things that Netflix could have decided to get into, like a like a social network where you could talk to the Rock directly, or or uh, or or or, or um, uh, uh, a free version. Everybody's like, you got to do a free version with ads. You just gotta. It's the only way. You, you ought to be a cable yeah. channel. You ought to be yeah. uh, like like there is so much power in the word no. And I can't think of too many companies that have been better at saying no than Netflix. And it's really remarkable, except for when they said yes to Quickster. Dumb, 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 dumb. That was dumb. <laughs> that was a question no one was asking, too. That right. was the weirdest part of that. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, let's talk about what to watch in Under Surveillance. I'm not here to stay. It's all about location, location. The Muppet Show is getting a new home on streaming, and a couple of seasons that you couldn't stream before are showing up with it. Uh, Muppet Show originally aired from 76 to 81, will arrive on Disney Plus February 19th. Of course, Disney owns uh, the intellectual property of the Muppets, and uh, you'll be able to stream seasons four and five for the first time. Um, great. Hooray. Muppet Show. Awesome. Everything's great. Um, totally out of nowhere. Random plug. Uh, for uh, Defunct Land, the YouTube channel where they did a whole season about um, Jim Henson's creations and all that stuff. My goodness, would I love to, yes, go and revisit all of this, but revisit it holding hand in hand with somebody who can explain to me frame by frame what was so special and unique about this experience. Uh, I, more than ever do I want that 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 VJ uh, uh, Sherpa experience that we talk about. Nicole, you ready to start the music? I am. Um, I, the only thing I'm a little concerned about is they might not have rights to the original music and they might not. You know, Some like, of the you know performances, I mean? like, yeah. Of music rights. Yeah. So I don't know if they have rights to all of those or maybe some of those i mean i don't really know how it works i mean um, the way you get rights is you use your leverage of having a lot of rights yourself and gosh yeah. disney seems to have a lot of those so if if that if disney can't solve that problem i don't know who can 
Yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh, this is us. The television show on NBC had to postpone its airing of last Tuesday's episode because of COVID related production delays in Los Angeles. It was the first scripted program to push an air date recently, uh, because of the second wave of infections. Uh, good news is the infection rate has been declining in Los Angeles, uh, for the past week and the state of California lifted its statewide restrictions and let, is now leaving it up to the counties, uh, to decide whether to implement stricter restrictions. Uh, and it looks like LA County is going to go back to where it was in November uh, with lots of restrictions in place, but they're going to restore outdoor dining and in outdoor gyms and in, and outdoor uh, and, and salons at lower capacity. So that should help. Uh, but, but yeah, kind of, kind of a notable moment that we saw a broadcast episode miss an air date because they're like, yeah, we just couldn't, we couldn't deliver that episode. I suppose it's a indication that, um, um, uh, how do I phrase this? Uh, uh, the bar has been lowered or we're all more comfortable with the reality that we're dealing mm. with. Right. Where it's just mm. like, it's, it's, um, one year ago, it, 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 it was newsworthy that we were even talking about delaying or, or, uh, uh pushing back the right. Olympics for a year, you know, it was like, what the what? Mm. And now it's just like, Hey man, it's going to be a week late. And it's like, we understand. We all got it. We all understand. A new trailer dropped for Godzilla vs. Kong coming to HBO Max and theaters on March 26th. Did y'all get a chance to look at it? I did, and and I was wondering, um, maybe maybe this is me being a bad person, but um, the simplest way to tell a Godzilla vs. Kong story is to make it a East vs. West story or a this philosophy versus that philosophy story. And make me understand and believe in both sides and have a complicated feeling as the two of them duke it out. Didn't really get much of any of that from this trailer. But but then again, I'm not probably the target market for this. I think it's just two big movie monsters going against each other. I don't think there's much else beyond that. Yeah, I think that's why it I've not like liked very much of the latest batch of Godzilla and Kong movies. <laughs> um, yeah, I could see that. Uh, as as somebody who enjoys seeing imaginary giant things uh, battle each other, I, I think I'm going to really like this. <laughs> That's all I can say <laughs> from the trailer, because you're not wrong, Brian. Uh, the, the patina of story that was uh, given to us here was Pretty very thin. thin. Pretty thin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, an animated series based on Robert Kirkman's Invincible comic book uh, will premiere on Amazon Prime Video March 26th. First three episodes will show up and then it'll run weekly through April 30th. The series includes the voices of Stephen Ewan as 17-year-old Mark Grayson. Guess they couldn't find a real 17-year-old. Uh, whose father is Omni-Man, the world's most powerful superhero, voiced by J.K. Simmons. So... This is the series, spo spoiler, I guess, I don't know, uh, 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 from somebody who's never read it. Uh, this is basically like evil Superman, right? It has elements of that, right? It's it's basically uh, um, Mark Grayson's dad is the world's most powerful superhero and everybody adores him. They, he's essentially Superman. And then as Mark Grayson gets brought into the superhero world, he starts to learn that there's a lot of gray uh, in that black and white. And maybe his dad isn't so great as everybody thinks. And how's he going to deal with that? Man, I'm so curious because uh, in a world before The Boys was on Amazon, this was the go-to property that my comic book friends would explain like, oh my God, you've got to wrap your mind around this. And they would tell me the story. And then, then I watched the boys and now I look at it and I'm like, sounds a, sounds a bit like the boys. There's, there's a similar series that's not from Kirkman uh, called irredeemable that I feel like is much more similar to the boys than this. Okay. This feels like, hey, if the boys is a little bit too extreme for you on the like Superman is bad, what if you wanted a little more nuance? You know, if you wanted the the uh what's the guy from the boys? I blank it on his his name. Homelander. Uh, Homelander. If you wanted Homelander uh to to be a little more understandable and maybe do some bad things, but you understood why instead of just being a bad guy, uh and and have a son. Uh, that's that loves him <laughs> rather than a son that you know is <laughs> never known him. Uh, that that's invincible. Like there's a lot more nuance, a lot more shades of gray there. 
Uh, dude, well, regardless, uh, 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 more more of all of it, please. All right, uh, a few more notes here. Netflix has approved Bridgerton for a second season. Uh, if you are the person watching the Snowpiercer TV series, uh, TNT has approved a third season a week before season two debuts on January 25th. Uh, so if you are, hey, good news. Apple TV Plus released its first full trailer for the Snoopy Show coming on February 5th. Brie Larson is going to executive produce and star in Lessons in Chemistry for Apple TV Plus. Uh, that's about uh, it was written by Susanna Grant. Who, who wrote Aaron Brockovich. Uh, she'll write and executive produce that series. Series will follow a 1960s woman who wants to be a scientist, but is forced to star in a cooking show in order to teach chemistry. And finally, variety sources say HBO Max is developing a Harry Potter TV series, or at least something within the wizarding world. Conversations are apparently happening with writers, so it's the earliest of days. However, Warner issued a flat denial that any Harry Potter series was in development at the studio. Uh, Variety continued to insist, like our, our sources say it is. So who, who knows? Um, I hate that we can't trust anyone, but uh, I, 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 I'm pretty sure my eight-year-old will like the Snoopy show. <laughs> like, uh, like normally in these notes sections, I, I, I find one thing to hang on to, and that's so that's all I got. What about you, Nicole? Um, of this list, actually. It's funny you mentioned Snowpiercer. Who's watching Snowpiercer? Because I haven't been watching it either, but the trailers look really interesting. So maybe maybe I'll be one of those people. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, apparently people are watching it uh, because they wouldn't give a third season before season two uh, if they weren't confident yeah. uh, about that. So, hey, uh, good, good for you, Snowpiercer fans. All right, let's talk about Eyes On, what we've been watching. Nicole, we'll start with you. What's, uh, what's something you've been enjoying lately? Well, I've been watching a lot of stuff, you know, lockdown does that to you. I've been watching, uh, have you actually been watching every single Simpsons episode? <laughs> because Disney Plus, right? It's there. Why not? I'll watch, I'll watch all of it. Uh, so I've been watching that and it's actually a lot of fun. We'd watch like the really early seasons, early season stuff. Uh, um, but do, the one, oh, do, do you have a hot take on the three by four versus 16 by nine conundrum? Because there like some, some jokes get cut off. There are yeah. some things that are chopped off. Like you can see the like, little inside joke signs and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, turn it on. Like it doesn't hurt to not have it on and just see the top and the bottom me personally. Um, and then, uh, the one thing that I want to highlight is, uh, the show called The Hustler. It's a game show. It's on ABC, so it's not like a streaming show. But I think it's really interesting. It's a game show. And if you if you're into werewolf, you know, the game, the game werewolf or mafia, very similar, where there's a hidden identity, uh, mm -hmm. hidden role player. I think you really like The Hustler. It's hosted by Craig Ferguson, one of my favorite people ever. And uh again, one of these one of these people in this in this game is the hustler. And he and and the idea is that you have, you have this sort of the, the role of the other players is to find out who the hustler is and the role of the hustler is to sort of be quiet and like, you know, not, not reveal himself. And um, whoever wins, whether it's the hustler or the other players in this game, they win like, you know, I don't know, $60,000, $70,000, whatever, whatever the, the pot, the, the, the pot, the money pot is. And uh, if you like, you know, hidden deduction, social deduction, like, no, he's totally lying. No, wait, she's lying. Wait, maybe maybe she's a lying. I don't know. So it's it's a great show to watch if you like having like that little like discussion with your spouse or your family to like you know that kind of like werewolf mafia vibe. I think you really enjoy it. It's or a really or Among cool Us, game it's show. similar to Among Us too, which is like those other games as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's the traitor? Who's the guy? Yeah, it's cool. Who's sus? Who's sus? Yellow, <laughs> yellow is always sus. <laughs> Brian, what about you? Uh, started watching Dave. I, I think it's on Hulu. Is that right, Bryce? It's an FX show on Hulu. Yeah, yes. there you go. Uh, uh, Dave, based on a, a, a YouTube personality, Little Dicky. Uh, it's it's um, man, a lot of Atlanta vibes, a lot of uh, uh, Ted Lasso vibes. Uh, imagine if uh, Atlanta was a little more white and a little more Ted Lasso, and you've got Little Dicky as Dave. It's great. Huh. Really enjoying right. it. Very cool. I, I'd seen a bunch of the promos for this right before it launched, but I hadn't heard anything about it since. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Uh, we binged Sweet Home on Netflix over the weekend. Uh, Sweet Home is not a product review show for uh, home products. Uh, it is a monster movie uh, spread out over 10 episodes. Uh, 
Wirecutter has a section called Sweet Home where they they do like, you know, your best toilet brush. That's why I made that joke. This is not that. Uh, this is not even a zombie movie. This is a world, uh, it's Korean series, where people just suddenly start turning into monsters and you don't know why. Uh, there's not. It's not like zombies where you get bitten and you're infected, although people worry about that early on it just can happen at any time and you will start hearing things and that's how you know it's happening to you uh and then eventually your nose will start bleeding and that's how other people know it's happening to you so society collapses these people in kind of a rundown apartment complex uh find themselves locked in uh, and fighting the monsters that have happened to other people in the building first, then trying to survive, then trying to figure out should they go out into the outside world and solve the mystery. And it's just one of those great shows where at the end of every episode, you're left going, I, I must find out what happens next, uh, which is why we raced through it over the weekend. Right on. So check that out on Netflix. That is Sweet Home. Bryce, what should we be on the lookout for? Hey, I've got a, an interesting and a free pick for you guys this week. Uh, SB Nation, the sports blog, has a video team called Secret Base. And uh, they've done a lot of really interesting sports stories, videos. And uh, their biggest one, their, certainly their longest one, I think, uh, is a, a six-part series, The History of the Seattle Mariners, as a part of their Dorktown series. It's a six-part, three-and-a-half-hour-long video essay that tracks the story of the Seattle Mariners, who are a uh, generally mediocre but very fascinating MLB team. Uh, this is the team that had Ken Griffey Jr. twice and his father twice, uh, Randy Johnson, the pitcher, uh, Ichiro Suzuki, um, and they uh, almost never made the, the postseason, even though they had a season where they broke the winning record, uh, or they tied, excuse me, the win record for a single season. Uh, this is narrated by Secret Base's John Boys and Alex Rubenstein, who both, uh, uh, this is a mixture of their stuff, right? The John Boys real focus on the story and the creative storytelling and the visual, and Alex Rubenstein, who is very into to stats uh, and stuff. Uh, so they they really set out the, the Mariners, who started with fire and um, a stadium full of um, poop. And, uh, and even though they aren't winners, uh, they make the case that the Mariners are the protagonists of the MLB. Uh, I think that this is, a, this is a really cool series. I, I almost made it through um, uh, over the weekend, but it's, it is long. There's a six part uh, playlist on their secret base channel where it's broken up into acts. Or if you want to tackle um, three hours and 40 minutes, uh, they have just it, it all in one super cut video. And uh, oh hey Tom, Tom's got a looks like a is that a is that a Mariners hat? Tom? Oh yeah, no, I, I figured I should put on my Seattle Mariners hat since we were talking about nice. the Mariners. So. Uh, so you can find that uh, and more at the Secret Base channel on YouTube, YouTube.com/slash SB Nation, or just search uh, Secret Base. Uh, uh, anybody got any thoughts on the Seattle Mariners? Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so three three and a half hours for the for the whole thing, not three and a half hours per episode. Right. Each episode is okay. twenty to fifty minutes. Yeah, yeah. But the, oh, but that's the not bad at all. Yeah. yeah. I I was seven years old when the Mariners were created uh, as a team, and so I was always fascinated with them and the Blue Jays because they were teams that I remember not being there and then suddenly being there. It was the the first expansion for me. So I've mm. I don't know. I've always and they were really bad. In Very the early bad days. It, yeah, it, it, the, uh, they make the it, argument that they've always been pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, and they they've been better the past twenty years or so, but still can't seem to ever make the playoffs. And when they do, can't get out of the playoffs. Yeah, uh, they've never been to the World Series. So, uh, yeah, I might have to check those out. This is cool. They do have some cool players though, like you mentioned, Ichiro is cool. Robinson Cano, Ken Griffey Jr. Like these are these are Ricky great Henderson players. played there in the twilight yeah, of his career. Amazing yeah. players. So yeah. Uh, so again, that's a. Uh, if you search "secret base" on YouTube, you'll see it. They've got it listed there in their playlists and on their channel page. But uh, uh, check that out. If you got something we should be on the lookout for, email it to us. Cordkillers at gmail dot com is where you can do that. Thank you. Hey, folks! I've got a newsletter, uh, and I just want to email it to you, and we can talk because uh, you can reply to that newsletter and be like, "Hey, Tom, I saw what you wrote there, and uh, that's cool. Here's what I'm thinking about it." So that newsletter is just me talking to you about the stuff I did, uh, the stuff I wrote all uh, the podcasts. I get links to everything that I talked about in the week. Uh, if you'd like to get that email, uh, go to freetomnewsletter.com because it's a newsletter. It's written by me and I don't charge you for it. Freetomnewsletter.com. Hey, hey, Are you amazed at how many people respond like, like 
somebody writes you an email and then you write them back because after all you wrote them with your yeah. free newsletter and then they respond and so you respond to their response and they're like oh my god i can't believe you're responding to me <laughs> it's like literally you signed right. up for this this is yeah. why you're here is so that you yeah, and because- i can be talking from where I sit, I sent you an email. Right. But from where they sit, I sent them a magazine and right. they said something to the magazine and the magazine talked back to them. <laughs> yes. FreeTomNewsletter.com. Of course, uh, if you want to replace your computer, because you're, yeah, look, uh, we, we didn't want to say nothing, but uh, your old computer, it's old, it's busted, it's what? out of date. No, we it's all the know it. Come on, man. Computers. <laughs> look, why don't you replace your computer with top of the line equipment? What best in class customer service and support us by heading on over to doghousesystems.com slash rogue. R-O-G-U-E, use promo code ROGUE at checkout. We get the credit. Let's move on to the front lines. Front lines. Uh, We have a date. Last year, Viacom CBS announced it would rebrand CBS All Access as Paramount Plus to better reflect the expanded content lineup that happened after CBS and Viacom merged. Company says the rebrand will go into effect March 4th in the U.S. and Canada. March 4th. Although Canadian users won't see an expanded content library until later in 2021, but they'll get the new name. Paramount Plus will also launch in Latin America on that day, as well as in the Nordic European countries on March 25th and come to Australia in mid-2021. I I have a a friend of the show, a longtime supporter of Daily Tech News Show in our Discord who is like, I know this is irrational what I'm about to say, but I will subscribe to Paramount Plus, not CBS All Access, not because of anything to change in the content, just because of the name, because I just didn't like the idea of paying more for CBS. But Paramount seems like that's a valuable thing to pay for. Dude, branding matters. For example, in my case, I didn't like to explain to my children that CBS All Access has some adult-oriented programming, including The Stand, which we're watching right now. And I used to have to say, excuse me, dad's going to go into this room, lock the door and watch the stand on CBS All Access and the kids would be very confused. So now I can say, excuse me, daddy needs to go to the PP place, Paramount Plus. <laughs> and now I'm go to the PP place. And, it's- and I just think you're, you're taking a, a taking a whiz. Yeah. <laughs> 45 minutes. Yeah. Anheuser-Busch will forgo its normal Budweiser commercials during the Super Bowl for the first time in 37 years. Instead of the the company says it will direct what it would, would what it would spend on ads to the Ad Council and COVID Collaborative to support COVID-19 vaccine awareness. Budweiser got Rashida Jones to produce and narrate a video about human resilience called Bigger Picture. Uh yeah, okay, I, I I don't know whether to run the cynical part of my brain or the happy that we're all in this together part of my brain, but yeah, right. it seems... I'm, I'm right there with you, Brian, because part of me is like, oh, Rashida Jones just did this. It's good. Uh, it looks like positive. I even teared up a little watching, watching the, uh, the preview video of it, but also it's an ad. You can't say we've decided not to run ads in order to run this heartwarming ad. Uh, Nicole, what, what side should we end up coming down on? It's an ad. It's an ad for Budweiser. I mean, all right. it, is. it is. So we'll all go to the pee pee it place. Is. It's an ad for Budweiser, <laughs> except we've are, we've just done it. We've just done the ad. We didn't have yeah. to wait until yeah. February yeah. 7th. That. We just did it we today. Did it for free it. and we got paid nothing. It, send us some Budweiser. Anheuser this is Bush. the half of marketing yes. that works. Yeah. All right. You're right. I'm from St. Louis, <laughs> from the St. Louis area. Drink Budweiser. All right. Uh, AMC announced it has raised $1 billion in funding since December 14th to help it avoid bankruptcy through July. So AMC Theaters not AMC, the television network. Uh, This comes after MGM, Universal, Sony, and Disney all made more changes to their Q1 movie release schedule, uh, including moving James Bond's No Time to Die to April. Uh, Ghostbusters went from June to November, and The King's Man goes from March 12th to August 20th. What does that mean when they say they raised money? Like, like uh, that means they or? they sold off some stock. They ra- they they issued okay. some bonds. They, they got they, liquid. They, okay. Yeah, yeah. They they got investors to give. They, they went into debt. They they, they raised a billion dollars more of debt that they'll have to pay back at some point. 
uh, WGN. They're the anti-Netflix. Maybe Netflix can start lending AMC theaters money. Maybe they already are. Who knows? WGN America's experiment with the News Nation centrist news broadcast seems to have paid off. The channel is changing its name from WGN America to News Nation. Owner Nexstar will add more news programming and get out of the uh, making original dramas. Uh, did not see that coming. Like a world in which a centrist anything could be profitable does not sound like the world I've lived in for quite a while. I think that goes to show just how expensive original dramas are to make. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're right. Fair enough. As much as I want this to be like, because I love News Nation. I, I I watched News Nation and I was like, oh, this is really good. Nobody's doing this. Like where they're just really trying to be even handed and they have rhetoricians on staff, uh, you know, to kind of look at their language and and try to expunge as much bias as they can if it, you know, subconsciously sneaks in there. Uh, but that's not why they're doing this. They're doing this because they realize like, wow, this is way cheaper than, than, than paying for all those original dramas. And, and so that's great. That's fine. That's right. great. I'm glad they're doing it no matter what. Well, and, and it's not a bad thing to recognize that there's an underserved market. If there's a very cheap way to provide something that nobody else is bothering to provide, then by all means, yes, free market, go, go, go. Have you watched any of this, Nicole? I'm just curious. Um, no, I think, I think they're based in Chicago, I believe, but I, I think they did just add the WGN network or I guess the news nation network to YouTube TV just very recently. Oh, okay. So I, yeah. I am just watching it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Verge's Julia Alexander has an article up about the niche streaming services out there, which is a good read in its own right. Uh, but I thought it was clever that they opened up the article with a quiz to see if you could tell real niche services from fake ones. They just gave you names and said, Pluto, real niche service or fake? Uh, and then, you know, after 13 questions, they told you how many they got right. Brian, did you uh, take the quiz? Uh, I certainly did. And I was very worried about how I performed. And then I found out that all three of us did the exact same grade of nine out of 13. Nine out of 13. <laughs> it was the movie one, the M-O-O-V-I one that got me because there's Mubi. And I mean, there are I mean, clearly five of four or five of them got me. But well, here's here's what happened to me. I I knew too much to do well because after the first <laughs> man, uh, look for the record, Tom. <laughs> neither of us are your parents. You don't need to. You're not no, no, being no, no, hired no. for a job. The no, question I, wasn't I, if, what's I mean, your one flaw, and it's that you love your job too much. I work too you, hard. If I you're care not too interested much. In, in my experience with the quiz, that's fine. No, please, I, I won't please, bore please, you. please, 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 yeah. please. Uh, I, I got the first five right, and I'm like, oh, so they they use some like Zumo that they don't think people know about. All of them are going to be right, uh, and so when it got to the first one that I didn't recognize, I'm like got to be one out there. You know, there's plenty out there that I don't know. Must be real. Fake. Then they did the next one, and it was the movie one that you're talking about. I'm like, that sounds really familiar. I bet that one's, they went back to real. Fake. <laughs> there was like a like yeah. an extended stretch of a whole bunch of like, uh, like real, 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 like, oh my God, are all of them going to be real? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I started to, to, to think like a clever test taker, uh, and I outsmarted myself. Uh, Nicole, you didn't happen to take the quiz, did you? I'm I'm doing it right now. It looks like I got oh ten out of thirteen. Okay, uh, that's good. Uh, I guess. Yeah. Congrats. Well, the show's yours yeah. now. You won. <laughs> WWE rules. Well, one, one more. The, the even funnier thing is I took it again later and I only got eleven uh -huh. out of thirteen, knowing what all the answers were. Netflix is looping. The French series about a thief has landed atop the U.S. top 10 with Netflix projecting 70 million households will watch it in the, in the first 28 days. That would put it in front of Bridgerton's 63 million projected and Queen's Gambit's actual 62 million. Um, does anybody happen to know if this has any relation to the anime Lupin? Lupin it is a different. It is not the same thing. Okay. Not, no, it's not based on a book. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Cool. But he is a thief. Yeah, he is a thief. Right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, this is not yeah, Lupin the Third. This is just Lupin. But just got it. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if the anime maybe took inspiration from the same book. Uh, you know, not a direct adaptation, but you know, maybe yeah. that influenced the All of it was anime. based on Clarence Carter's Stroken <laughs> from the 1970s. Uh, and Billy Squire's The Stroke. Uh, no, I 
Eileen watched this without me because I was and like, ah, I don't know. Go ahead and, and, and watch it. And uh, she she blazed through it uh, and said it was amazing. So I, I might have to go back and watch this myself. Cool. Let's get to the dispatches from the front. Norm wrote in and said, late last Wednesday, I was watching the latest episode of The Expanse. And with 10 minutes, the video wouldn't display on my iPhone. It was too late to turn on the TV because I didn't want to distract the family. Plus, it was pretty late. All hope was lost. Or was it? I then remembered a segment on your show from a couple of years ago talking about how Netflix added an audio description feature. So check to see if Prime Video had it. And they did. All these years of listening to Cord Killers finally paid off. And I didn't need to worry about getting spoiled overnight. P.S. I searched on the site. I think it was episode 67 when you were talking about Daredevil regarding the auto description. I remember that. That was Brian. Uh, that was a long time ago. April 20th, 2015. Norm says, I've been a patron for more than seven years. It seems like yesterday. Good luck to all of us so we can make it another seven or maybe even more. Thank you, Norm. That's that awesome. Absolutely makes my day. Uh, Me this too. one, uh, uh, we could do as much or as little as we want, but uh, we got an email from Josh saying, uh, Hey, gang, was reading the news about Peacock WWE, which we talked about earlier. And uh, he wanted to get, uh, he wanted to give his opinion on how he categorizes all of the different big players. He says, Hulu for him is next day viewing of current shows to avoid paying for cable or other over the top services, also for FX shows. Netflix is amazing nature, true crime documentary documentaries, mindless fun, HBO Max, high quality shows, same day release of 2021 movies, CBS All Access to him is subscribe after a season of any Star Trek uh, show comes out in order to catch up, nothing else. Peacock is the one he uses the most during the day, uh, 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 use the most during the day where one of their huge list of comedies is running in the background. So that would be like The Office or Friends and uh, Disney Plus for obvious reasons of having kids. Would love to know how we categorize all of those. Um, man, I, I, I got to tell you, I don't differ really at all outside of Netflix. Um, I, I don't really think of Netflix as Amazing Nature or True Crime. I, I really think of it as a, the, the the Kim's Convenience channel. Uh, that's the only big difference I have. I was going to say the biggest difference I have from him is Netflix. Uh, to me, Netflix is Deep Space Nine and Netflix Originals. Uh, you know, that, that's where I watched Bridgerton. That's where I watched Queen's Gambit. That's where I watched The Crown. Uh, and uh, and then also Deep Space Nine, which I could also watch on CBS All Access, to be honest. Uh, but I just got in the habit of watching it there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the rest of these are pretty close. Hulu is gone is is less catching up on current shows that are on TV the next day for me than it used to be. It's it's more watching original stuff from Hulu, especially the FX on Hulu stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if FX just just increases in prominence on Hulu, and at some point Hulu just uh, it, it becomes increasingly difficult to figure out, you know, is that a Hulu thing or an FX thing, you know, b b between all of the, uh, uh, so much good adult program. Yeah. I, I'm not sure Disney knows what to do with Hulu exactly, but right now they're treating it like the adult Disney plus. Yeah. And I think that's probably a good strategy. Do you have any differences on these, Nicole? Um, Hulu is similar, except I'm, because I have YouTube TV and I DVR a lot of shows, I don't really need the next day viewing uh, option. But I you know it, it is good for like if you want to avoid ads altogether. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, depend, depends on the Hulu package you have, I suppose. The rest are pretty good. Netflix, I will agree with you that I do watch it mostly for their originals and the occasional like, you know, fun movie like like a James Bond movie or whatever. It's, I watch it on Netflix because it's, it's there. Um, I don't have CBS All Access because I, you know, I only, I only subscribe to it every every so often. Uh, the um, PP Peacock place. I have the PP place. <laughs> it, starting March fourth, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Disney Plus. I actually been using it a lot lately. Like I mentioned, Simpsons. I watch, you know, it's just a Disney Disney Plus thing. I don't know. I think to me, out of all of this, the weird one for me is Hulu because it's kind of Disney, but not Disney. It's it's a weird one, and I. To me, it's, that's that's the weird. I don't know why I still have it. <laughs> that's that's the one thing out of the list. I'm like, oh, why do why do I have why do I have Hulu? I don't know why I have Hulu. Uh, so that's the one thing I'm not sure if if I, if I would personally keep. But. Yeah. The the other thing is uh, Netflix is the one I have to think about because all the rest feed into Apple TV Plus's automatic tracking. So I don't even oh. know. I don't even think about 
like what channel is Doom Patrol on? What channel is Cheers on? What channel is The Stand on? I just see, oh, there's the next episode in the row of, of you know, what I'm watching. Click and it starts playing. Well, Nicole Lee, thank you so much for joining us for Cord Killers this week. As always, it's a pleasure to have you. What what do you got going on? What Where can folks find more of what you're doing? Um, you can just go to twitter.com slash Nicole to read my random ramblings about, you know, COVID, food, random other things. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, and look for her on Engadget as well. Our <laughs> website right. is cordkillers.com. Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. We're live on twitch.tv slash night attack. Also carried on diamondclub.tv Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We will talk to you again next time. Hey, Tom Merritt. Yes, Brian Brushwood. Know who I love even more than my own children? Your other children? No, not my wife. I know what you're saying. I love our $5 patrons. These are the people that keep us loud, live, and independent. Thank you so much, $5 patrons. You know what? I love them more than not life itself, because then I'd be dead and I couldn't appreciate them, but really, really, really close. And I'm so thankful that they are here to make this show happen. Thank you so much to all of our $5 a month patrons. You guys are wizards. You're champions. Thank you, everyone. You're heroes. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>